Hello and welcome back to the Be Healthy and Thrive podcast. My name is Brianna Wilkerson and I'm just really excited to really venture with you in this series around catalyzing your purpose. And so this is, I just wanted to come and jump in to kind of lay a foundation for the next four episodes that you're going to hear. And I originally wasn't going to do this, but as I really listen to the episodes and know that what's coming up in regards to the resources I'm offering and the different master classes I'm offering, I just thought it would be really good to give you a context and foundation. And actually, when I think about it, most of my like series, I tend to do that on the podcast. But We'll go and jump in. So basically, we're going to be talking about purpose for the month of February. And the reason why it's actually very important that it's about a year ago I was, was when I was really talking about this as well. But I wanted to give you a little bit about my story in regards to really finding and pursuing my purpose. And then really talk about seven different steps to catalyze your purpose. Briefly, then there's a free workbook that goes with that. And then talk about the different things upcoming this month to really help you really hone in. Because let's be honest, we all can download freebies. And I really hope my freebies are helpful for you. But sometimes going deeper with support is really what we need. So I'll talk about that in a bit. So my story, basically, I'm going to try to summarize it. But basically, I went to school, went to college as to study accounting. And that's not uncommon for those coming from the Cayman Islands. Uh, But I kind of knew that after, well, I actually didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I knew that I was good at accounting, so it only made sense. But after really, to be really honest, coming to know Jesus as Lord and more than Savior, like my faith really understanding it and choosing for myself, that shifted and that started my purpose journey. I started to really see that I wanted to make sure that my time, the time that I had, I wanted to invest it well. And I wanted to invest it in other women and help them know their worth in God and know their worth apart from what they studied, apart from how they looked, apart from what they did. And so I really started to coach and mentor a lot of women in the spiritual area, but also in their life because it's all very connected. And so I became a volunteer staff for University Christian Fellowship in the, at the University of Tampa where I went to school, where I met my husband, where we both were just radically transformed by the love of Jesus. And it was, it was there that I really started to see through really coaching these women that I was made for more and they were made for more. And that God had so much more for their life and so much more for my life than what we were currently living. And so then basically, I had to move back to the Cayman Islands to work with my accounting job. And I, it was tough because I thought, hey, uh, this, this fellowship thing, this coaching, this mentoring is really what I want to do. But I had to do my job. And so my husband actually came and he started the ministry uh, full time while I worked in accounting. And I still volunteered. But I struggled because I thought that was the thing. Uh, but, you know, the Lord has different plans. And so... I got my accounting degree, I got my MBA, started working, but then the Lord wanted to do something in me. And I had struggled a long time. And you can go and look and listen to my other podcasts, go look, check my blog, talk with me, a long time in the areas of physical health, struggling with different eating issues, struggling with my sense of worth and those things. And I really felt God really say it's time to be made well. And that's actually where made well comes from, comes from a Bible verse. And so this, it went on this journey where I started to find a lot of healing and restoration in my relationship with food, my body, myself, and so much more. And then really what happened was I started to feel a deep sense and a calling to also help specifically other women in the same thing. And that was actually after the Whole30 program, the first time I did it. Just the fact that I could eat real food and not feel deprived and take care of myself was a game changer. And I wanted that game changer for everybody. And I still do, still do. So if you're listening, I want it for you. And so basically from there, I, I was like, what do I do? How do I do this? And so I found the Institute for Integrative Nutrition Online, which is a holistic health um, coaching school. And I immediately, when I started, I said, this is what I need to do, like immediately. And I was able to start seeing clients six months through. So I did. 
And again, I was just like, I got to do this. Uh, then slowly I transitioned out of my accounting job into coaching. And I went part-time in, uh, moved out of auditing to internal finance, went part-time. Then eventually actually a year ago to today that I'm recording this was my last day at my accounting job. Crazy. And I, I mean, I could have give you so many reflections in a year of what, like a lot of people will sit here and say, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're so inspiring. You're so courageous. I admire you. And, and that is what I want, but I want other people to do that. And I want people to feel like they can too, but it's tough. And I'm not going to say that it's easy, whether you're going to do something full time or you're going to just pursue some sort of passion of yours. It is not easy, but the things that are worth it are not easy, but there are so many beautiful gifts that you get when you start to pursue your purpose. It's uncanny. Like I've never developed more as a person. I've never met more amazing people in my life. I've never been stretched more. I've never yet come to the point where I really realize what I love to do, even within my business. I love learning, love creating, love coaching, all those different things. And I just think it's a beautiful thing to see that like a year ago, I didn't have a podcast. I didn't want to even think about writing, uh, starting a podcast. I wouldn't have had, I don't, didn't have a Facebook group really or courses or an email list. and and. I wouldn't have even thought of writing a book, which I am thinking about now. So you see what I'm trying to say. There's, there's something that happens when you start to open yourself up to the possibility that your dream, your, re, your, your reality can shift and your dream can come true, that there's a flood of ideas. There's a flood of opportunities. And that just goes with anything in life. I talk about this a lot that if we're closed off to something, we're not going to see when the opportunity is in front of us because we're not looking for it, Right. And I don't want to digress, but I just got to say that. And so, yeah, here I am a year later and really just so grateful for this journey. So grateful for the amazing women and men that I've gotten to meet, gotten to learn from, I'm still learning from, that I am like entrepreneurship. If you want to, if you want to go... <laughs> If you wanted some like personal development, go start a business or go start something new because there's so much change that's going to happen. Your money mindset, your mindset, your success mindset, you know, your habits, all these things shift when you start to really say, Hey, I want more for my life, but you become more of the person you were meant to be. And I know I'm more of the person that I was meant to be. And I know that the women that I've helped in this area of purpose are as well. It is like the most beautiful thing in the world. And so I came up with this framework over the last year or so, in particularly when I was, uh, when I received the award to be the Young Caymanian Leader for 2016, 2017, you had to pick a platform and purpose was my platform. So I actually came up with this framework while teaching others about being made for more in the high schools and all over the Cayman Islands, as well as just blogging about it. And so I wanted to then repackage this framework to one, to be a free resource so people can kind of go through think it through, reflect, but also to be a masterclass where you will get support right there live to walk through this. And even, and I'm going to make the masterclass available after for those who aren't able to do it live, but I mean, you won't get that in touch support, but you'll still get to see it. You'll get to see what that looks like. And so that is my heart is that I do not believe that I'm the only one that can do what I'm doing. And I don't believe I'm the only one that has something beautiful to do. I do believe that it's unique. Uh, it's unique what I'm doing and it's unique what you're doing. But I believe that we are all made for more and we're settling for things that we should not be settling for. We're just not, we're just settling. But we all have a choice. We always have a choice to choose differently for our lives. And I'm going to challenge you that as you walk with me and walk with the women that you're going to hear through this podcast in this series, through the free resource, and hopefully the masterclass that you will believe this to be true, that you yourself can choose differently and you are made for more. And so I'll kind of just end this little, little bit before I talk about the seven steps, giving you this quote that kind of really was the thing that solidified it for me. So Dr. Miles Monroe, he is a Bohemian pastor, passed away, but wrote tons of book on purpose, potential, and leadership. Tons. But this one in particular, maximizing your potential. I got this book years before I read it. And it just wasn't the time. And that's actually how I actually start to read books is there's a lot of books I want to read. 
but I have to ask myself, what is, what is the book that is supposed to speak to me and transform me in this season? Cause I don't like reading just for the sake of reading. I want to be transformed by it in some way, whether it's my mind, my life. And I started reading this book and this quote, this was the introduction. I was reading the book while like the nomination and the finalist process for YCLA. And the book says, you were created for a purpose that demanded your existence on this planet. And when you literally listen to the powerful, like I'm going to say it again so you can hear it. You were created for a purpose that demanded, demanded your existence on this planet. Meaning that there's only something that you can do, something that you can contribute, that your existence was required for. All creation-based thoughts aside, I believe that to be true. And I do believe, personally, and many others would agree with me, that God created you for a purpose. It says in Ephesians, he created you for good works that he prepared in advance for you to do. So he thought about it, and then he brought you in, and he's like, what good works are they? Right? And so I am on the firm belief, you listening to this, that you have a purpose that maybe you're walking in and maybe you're like, great. You're like, you already know. So you're thriving, you're pursuing it. But maybe some of you are sitting here saying, I have no idea. And that's totally okay. Wherever you're at in these different stages of kind of your purpose journey is what I call it. It is fine. And I think we're all at different places and to give yourself grace and be at whatever stage you need to be as however long you need. All right, so let me then get into the seven steps to catalyzing your purpose that there's a, there's a workbook to go along with this. So make sure you sign up to get that in the blog post or in the show notes for the, for the podcast and we can kind of go from there. All right, so basically the seven steps, I, I kind of start off the, the workbook in particular really defining what purpose is for you. And I'm just going to go through this briefly because in the master class is where we, we're going to dive deep into this. And actually when even you sign up for the master class, you get access to a seven part series I've done on this already on this very stuff in more depth. But I just wanted to give you an overall general understanding. So the first thing defining what purpose is there's just the, I'm just going to say the dictionary definition. It's really the reason for which something exists is done, made, or used. And I believe there are about three different stages generally in your purpose journey. It's the discovery stage, the pursuit stage, and the thriving. Discovery is very much what it is, like discovering more of who we are, what, be, what we believe, what our passions are, what our strengths and weaknesses are, what lights our soul on fire, what doesn't. Right. It's just that is the one of the most beautiful stage. And I actually think we're always in the discovery stage. But in the beginning, that's going to be where you're at. Then we're in the pursuit. We kind of know what we're doing, whether it's our current job, whether it's starting a ministry, starting a blog, starting a video channel, raising our kids like that's a purpose. Whatever it is, you're actually pursuing it. And but yet there's always room for growth. And so the third stage is thriving. You're pursuing your purpose and maybe you're really doing well at it, actually. But yet we can always grow more right? So whatever stage you are, it's always good to go back through these seven steps to kind of get clear because what you'll find is even if you're um, an entrepreneur or something like that, you're starting something, you're going to see that it's going to be refined as long as you go. And that's been the case in my business. I've done so many things, so many things. And now I get back to the point where like, this is actually my core mission. My core mission is really to empower others, in particular women, to, to be really be healthy and thrive in their whole life. And that sounds general because it is, but it's not like I care about the whole woman, the whole person, them being whole, healthy in every single aspect of their life. Because in my experience, when I am that I am so much better for the whole entire world. I'm so much happier, joyful, and so much purposeful, so much more purposeful. Right. And so knowing that those are the different stages, just always come back and go through this process. So then I have some reflection questions in the workbook. Just make sure you download it, go through it, but it's just some reflections based on the definition of purpose and the stages, kind of what, what does purpose mean to you? What different stages are you in? And if there were no obstacles, what you would do in your life. So this is the beginning stages of really exploring and discovering even the concept of purpose. And 
then the first step itself is to discover who you are as a person. We're all uniquely made. We have a unique personality and makeup. And although I believe personality tests can indicate something to us, they do not define who we are. Who we are is a lot more than an extrovert or an introvert, shy or unshy, dominate. Well, it's who we are is a lot more than that. But I do believe they can really, if you sit and really take some time to analyze them, I believe they can inform us of something about who we are and maybe then even something we uh, are supposed to do with that. So there's a bunch of different ones that I've taken that I really, really love. Um, there's Meyer Briggs. Uh, you might hear different people talk about there are four letters. They're an ENFJ, ESFJ, all those things. And for me, taking this very, very early on in my leadership abilities in coaching and training, I knew that this was really helpful to me. And so I'm an E, extrovert, N, intuitive, which used, I, I used to be an S if you've ever taken the test before, really sensing, kind of just sensing the here and now, the feelings. Intuitive is really a lot more like um, what could be. Um, maybe things could be different. And I think as I've started my business, I've had to be more intuitive. And then I'm an F, I'm a feeler. I just feel, I feel. But then I'm a high J. The difference between a J and a P, J is judging, P is perceiving. Js are super like, I know what I'm doing 10 months from now. I have it on the calendar. I've booked it at the spa, whatever. Uh, P's are like, you know, I'm just going to take it as it goes and we'll see what happens. And both are good, but knowing that about yourself really makes it really easy when you're starting to pursue your purpose, right? So knowing that about myself, I'm going to plan out a lot. I'm going to be like, okay, I want to reach this by here. I got to do this. And then P's are more like, you know, I'm just going to try it and see what happens. And although that's awesome, sometimes like, no, you actually need to put some goals in a place. Well, the other person, you need to say, actually, you need to just let it easy and be, you know, be a little loose. And so both are great. So it's just knowing that about yourself helps you pursue your purpose better. The Enneagram has nine different personality types. I took this when I was um, a leader, student leader in a varsity in college. And it's just such a great test to really show more of who you are, especially when you're uh, walking out your purpose. So I was a high two, which is a helper. And you, anyone could, anyone that knew me was like, yeah, you're a helper. Just like, there's some great, great aspects to a helper. And there's some great non-great aspects and for both types. And that's why I love the Enneagram test. Cause it shows you on your good side, what you're like on your bad side, what you're like and having, knowing how to manage those. Right. So helpers like just always willing to put others and always willing to just lend a hand. But then sometimes like if they don't get appreciation or they, you know, they get upset if they don't, if they might even be a little falsely humble. And so, but you know what? I know what I've taken these tests multiple times since I started my business and it's changed. I think I'm a high achiever, which if you know me now and you still know me, I was a high achiever then high, 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 high achiever. I'm all about like getting that goal done. Right. And so it may shift in your, your, in who you are, mate, it shifts as you grow. Right. And maybe when you're in certain situation, it calls you to be something different. So that's a great test. And then the strengths finder, I took that about nearly a year ago and it was a life changer thing. Cause I think far too often do we operate thinking we need to fix ourselves and fix our weakness. The strengths finder helps you really get your top five strengths and operate more on your strengths. So mine is achiever, no surprise there, a uh, learner. And I've come to know that to be true. And I love it. I used to, sometimes I would get upset like Brian, why do you need to know everything about everything? And I'm like, no, I need to just cause I love learning. And then strategic, focus, and restorative. Restorative is definitely very much like part of the coaching part, really want to restore people. So knowing that, I'm better able to operate in my strengths, okay? And even now as I pursue this purpose, it's like, okay, I'm a high achiever, so I need to set goals for myself in this purpose. All right, I'm very strategic, so I need to set be strategic with my goals and how I spend my time. I'm a learner. I need to incorporate some learning and development into my business budget, which I have, right? Because... I need to learn in order for me to keep going and keep sharing and, and keep growing and, you know, helping others. So knowing all that just makes it better for you to pursue your purpose. And then the, um, have some questions there to reflect on that again. So go through that and then discover and pursue your passions. Passion, you know, means multiple things, but basically it's a strong, barely uncontrollable motion. And let me tell you something since following my purpose, what I believe to be my purpose that God wants me to disciple and train people in their whole health and life. Well, 
let's just say I felt really passionate about it. There are some moments I get an idea that literally I cannot shift the idea. I cannot change the idea until I do the idea because I'm just like, this is it. This is it. And I've just had so many ideas. It's like a birth of vision and ideas since really pursuing my purpose that I didn't have before, right? So knowing your passions can help inform what your purpose may be. So some of the questions that I think might be helpful is asking yourself what drives you. Well, what drives me? Who are the people I most want to help? What are their needs that I feel most drawn to? And what causes am I most passionate about? And what can I do to take one to two, three steps to just work on that thing to see if that's the thing? You know, I've tried many things since doing my business, like ways of coaching and all that. Some I didn't like, some didn't work, some did. And so don't be afraid to try things and it not work out the way you planned because that makes you a better leader and a better person. Trust me. So really just asking yourself that, to be honest, if you're passionate about baking, bake. I would love it if you would bake for me. You know, I, I think we, 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 we somehow sometimes when it comes to our passions or purpose or callings, we elevate others towards the other. That's not true. If there is someone who's like, you know what, I feel called to stay home and really love and raise my kids. I want them to do that because that's what they feel called to. And that is a high calling in my opinion. Right. If there's someone that's like, you know what, I just want to, you know, teach in a school or I just want to be an accountant. Like I feel called to it. Be it. We're not all meant to do the same thing. We are contributing to the world when we are best walking in alignment with who we're called to be. That's my opinion. Hopefully that's yours. So the third step. So, so far we said, discover who you are as a person, discover your and pursue your passions. And third, discover the potential within potential is something or someone who has much more greatness in them to be developed. And I asked about maybe last year around this time, a couple of different entrepreneurs, what they thought potential would be. And Kara, Kara Ann Yeager said, to me, potential is something that's hidden that needs to be dug up, but the right person knows it there. Like precious gems, we know they are in the earth. It just takes digging in the right places with the right tools and perseverance to keep going. Also polishing them once they are extracted. I believe that that's like the finished product of tapping into your own potential. Are someone else helping you do that? We are all diamonds in the rough. Mm, chills on my bones when I, <laughs> and so Dr. Miles Monroe then says in his book, and I listed it here in the free resource, six keys to unlocking your potential. Know your source is the first one. Know who created you and why. Know who created you and why. Because from there, you're gonna know all the rest, you know? Uh, as, and that, that was, and I'm just going to say it, that was the change for me is when I really started to know God, know Jesus and know who they are and who they created me to be. That is when I started to walk more in my purpose. I'm just going to say it, whether <laughs> you're listening and you agree or not, it is true. And the second thing is understand how you were designed to function. Once you know who created you and why, then you're going to start to know more about your how you're designed. Then comes the purpose part, right? Knowing your source, why they meant you, why they, and how they created you to function. You're going to better understand, okay, on a general scale, God's called me to be like this. Now I need to find on this specific, specific scale, right? Then four, understand your resources. Look at the available resources in front of you that can help you fulfill your potential. So for me, it's a lot of reading and a lot of courses and um, talking things through with people and experiencing things, teaching. When I learn something, help, what really helps me to start applying it as well as to teach it, right? And then the fifth thing is maintain the right environment. If you're not in an environment that is conducive, you need to, if you can change your environment or change the people, just saying. Six, work out your potential. There's one thing to know what you want to do and there's another thing to do it. And any successful purpose, purpose person in anything did not become successful by just sitting there. They took action in some way. So you need to work out your potential and that's what helps unlock it. Then there is some reflection questions to go with that. And then fourth is to push through fear. Cause let me tell you, once you start to get clarity around your purpose and your vision, there are going to be fears coming out the wazoo. Am I, excuse me, am I enough? Can I do this? What if I fail? What if I go broke? What if what if, but what if this, what if this, and actually I would even almost ask, sometimes people are afraid of actually succeeding. Sometimes it's actually more comfortable to stay stuck in our mess than to get out of it. And so 
I would ask you, you know, there's this great, great quote I found and she means business by Carrie Green it says, you know, what if I fail? What if I fall? But my darling, what if you fly? And I think we need to start thinking about that. What if this actually worked? Someone actually asked me a question, I think early last year. So you're, you know, you're a coach, but was there anyone, you know, on Island when you started that you knew of? And I was like, nope. They're like, so what, what made you like, feel comfortable going? I was like, well, I knew I had to do it because I felt called to it and I knew it was a need. And so it didn't matter if anyone else had done it before. I, I didn't, that wasn't something I thought about. And sometimes, you know, I think it is good to look and see what other people are doing, but it, they're all great things started with someone having an idea and being willing to pursue it when no one else could or had tried. Right. And so if we're constantly looking to see and comparing and seeing if others are doing it, we may never actually pursue our purpose. Right. So there are different fears that may come up and the different four strategies I talk about is knowing your why, why are you following this dream and passion? I have this quote on my wall that says, when you feel like quitting, think about why you started every day. I look at it. I don't feel like quitting every day, some days, but I look at it cause it, it's, it's true. And when I write that why out, mm, let me tell you, I'm like, man, I got to keep going on my work's not done. Right. Um, two is set smart goals. And I actually just, uh, did put together a goal setting masterclass that is available. You can even purchase it from now on setting smart goals. And in particular setting goals, uh, we look at, you know, where you're satisfied and not satisfied in your life and then how you can set goals to change that. So if purpose and vocation is one of them, then I would suggest that goal setting course as well. Share your why and goals with those you trust. Uh, I just finished reading a book by Lisa Nichols, uh, called no matter what. And she talks about having rocket booster friends. So people who will tell you the truth, who will be there to encourage you, support you and hold you accountable. And then fourth, I'm going to say this because this has been a game changer for me. Upgrade your story. We have created stories in our lives that have, are there to keep us protected, to keep us safe based on the past, based on the future. But these stories of what if are not enough most of them are no longer serving us. They served us at one point to keep us safe, keep us protected, but we can choose to say, you know what, I'm grateful for you, but you're no longer serving me, so I'm gonna choose a new story. I'm gonna choose, hey, this is gonna be work. I'm gonna choose, hey, I will impact people. That's what we need to do. So rewrite your story, all right? And then the fifth step is to create a purpose plan. I'm strategic, so I love plans. We need to create plans to make our purpose and dream become reality because failing is to plan is planning to fail, you know? And, and, and I want to give you grace. There's so much grace, and I have had to learn to give myself grace upon grace upon grace upon grace on this journey. You know, it's very easy to be like, if I had only done this, if they had done this, if this was like this, this would have happened. And it could have been. But I'm human and I'm not perfect. And yet at the same time, I've done some, a lot of good, you know, so giving yourself grace, um, but also making a plan. So five steps I outlisted in the workbook is get clear on your end goal. What do you actually want to accomplish? Because when you're clear on your end goal, you work backwards. What do I need to accomplish in a year, six months, three months, one month, weekly and daily? And that I go a little bit more in depth into that in the goal setting session as well. Create rhythms of work and rest. This has been a game changer. And I keep saying game changer for my, like right now. Um, but it's been a game changer because I am such a hard worker. And I'm not saying that to be like gloat or anything. I work too hard sometimes. Like I don't take enough rest. And ever since I've been like the last three or four months being like, okay, I've worked hard for three or four days. I need to rest more the next two days. I've been able to one, get more clarity, celebrate what I've done and actually be even more inspired, right? So creating rhythms of that. Another tip is to commit to seeing it through and get the support you need. I have invested a lot in my business, a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy, but I know that I know me and I know that I need the support from coaches, from fellow entrepreneurs and fellow purpose-driven dreamers, fellow mentors, you know, uh, and the learning and I'm committed to seeing it through. And there have been times, there have been times in this year that I've sat there and I said, man, it'd be so much easier to not do this. 
And then my husband, because he's so awesome, will remind me, mm, I think that I don't think that's true because you love what you do. And you're right. I'm like, you know what? You're right. So I'm just going to go to sleep and then wake up in the morning refreshed, right? So anyway, so just really commit to seeing it through. It is not an easy thing, but it is worth it. It is worth it. It is worth it. And so that's why I love to support women in particular, of course, men too, in uh, following their purpose. All right. The sixth step is to create a prom um, promote promote. Ah, sorry, promotion plan. All right, people feel really weird about this, and I'm just going to talk about this for a little bit, if, if that's okay with you. So when it comes to promoting yourself, people struggle. And for some reason, that hasn't been a struggle because I've, for me because I've shifted my mindset. So it's particularly on social media. I think a lot of people, a lot of friends, fellow, fellow entrepreneurs will actually come to me and ask questions, you know, wow, like, how do you do this social media marketing thing? You're always present. You're always like inviting. You're always promoting. And, and well, then I'm always selling at the same time too. But, you know, I started to see that, you know what, when there is something awesome, like you truly believe it is awesome and worth um, people also going in the awesomeness, then, well, you got to tell them. It's like, I feel convicted if I don't. And so I've really start, started to see even sales as the art of inviting. I'm just inviting people to an opportunity that they can, take part in, they can choose. And it's the same with the gospel. Like I'm just inviting people to take part in the most amazing thing in the world. And so for me, I remember on my, per when I created a plan and I would share it with people, like, what do you think? And even now, like there have been some new developments that I'm thinking about doing within my coaching practice that I've asked and talked with friends through and saying, Hey, what do you think? And they're like, Hey, that, I think that would be really good. Or maybe, maybe later. Or I'm like, you know what? I'm thinking I want to do this. So let me just explore the possibility a little bit. Let me just, you know, study a little bit about it, see. And then when I feel like it's for sure, I'll do whatever I need to do to make it actionable. But inviting people in to that process is super important. But four different ways to promote your purpose. Establish presence. Establish presence in the industry or whatever you feel called to. So if it is in uh, the ministry world, like, let people know that you're doing ministry and social media makes it super easy. Like, and I just find social media quite fun. I mean, sometimes you can get stressed out. Oh, I need to do this. I need to run an ad all that. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to lead by my heart. Hopefully the right people see it. And so, uh, you know, establish a presence and this takes time, you know, and figuring out where you, your target market is what we call the people you want to reach or the area you want to cover, you know, try to establish presence there. And some of the ways to do that is building relationships. Don't be scared of relationships. Don't be scared. Like just get to know people. Yes, online, but in real person. So I've met a lot of amazing people online uh, the last year or so, but I have chats with them. We go on Skype, we go on Zoom. I meet some of them in person because they're people, right? Like no, don't let social media like take over and to the point where you're like not talking to people in real life. Talk to people. Third thing, serve and give value. This is something that I always try to do as much as I can without giving away too much is I want to give people value and I want to serve people. So even that new thing that I was talking about that I might be exploring in my coaching business is, well, I think it's a way to better serve my clients and better serve my people, better serve you guys. So I think it's something I should explore. You see what I'm saying? And that will provide more value. And then the fourth thing is invite people to go deeper. If you're an activist for the environment, how you, and you want to promote it, you need to invite people to also care about the environment. If you are a coach or you're starting a ministry, you're starting doing something, well, you need to invite people into it and invite them to take action because it's really in that next step that deeper transformation happens, right? And then the seventh one is to process and wait patiently. So your thing is not going to unfold in a day, TD, Robo. And if any of my companions are listening, I'm probably having too much fun laying it all out there. TD is sister, girl, Bobo's boy, brother. My sister still calls me TD. It's awesome. Hope she calls me TD for the rest of my life. Anyways, um, I'm cracking myself up over here. But nothing can happen in a day. Success doesn't happen in a day. And I think often we look at other people and we say, wow, how'd they do that? But really, it didn't just happen like that. Even if it, they made go from zero to 100,000 in one day, they did a lot of work before that to get to that 100,000. And this is something that I try to lead in with 
just all of me is that I'm going to let you know when things are rough. I'm going to let you know when things are awesome. And I'm going to say to you that sometimes things are tough and all the work that it has to go in to go forward because it's real and it's honest. And that's what I want to hear more of is the struggle and yet the victory because that's life, right? And it's choosing to overcome that struggle to really go forward in, in that and claim that victory. So I have seven different tips in the workbook. Again, writing out your statement, writing out your why, and write it out as often as you can. Put it where you can see it. Visualize your goal. This is something that I didn't realize that I actually do quite a bit is every morning when I'm reflecting and praying and journaling, I actually visualize whatever I'm feeling or thinking for that day and what it would feel like, what it would think like, what it would be like. Um, renewing your mind daily. Hopefully this podcast is one way to renew your mind, like podcasts or books or affirmations or scripture, worship music, all of that. Uh, is ways that I renew my mind. Um, take action steps daily. Do something every day to move you forward. Something every day. Reflect and celebrate. This is, again, a game changer because when you can celebrate even that one step, man, then you know that then you're actually celebrating yourself and rather than thinking, oh, it's only when this happens. Sixth thing is don't quit. Remember, only you can feel, only you can do what you're called to do. And seventh is to be still. It says in Psalms, I think 46, 10, be still and know that I'm God. You know, just be still and trust and have faith that your dream will become a reality. Okay, so go download the workbook that goes with this. Go through the questions. And really, I'm going to take this moment to invite you to, one, keep listening for the next four episodes. Four amazing women lined up talking about believing you were made for more. Um, catalyst for change, your creative career, being authentic and courageous and following your, your purpose and in your business. But I want to invite you to the Catalyze Your Purpose Masterclass. And so I have done a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching and I've done some group stuff, but I really am leaning into trying to do more things to more group. Reason why there is power in community and there is power in you journeying with someone that whether they're ahead of you or the same level of you, you seem you're not alone. And so I'm doing this masterclass live in an online format, so through Zoom, with 10 women only for the online, and then in person here at the Artness Studio, 20 spots, just you can have more, I can handle more when it's live, and I'm gonna have some help live. Uh, so March 3rd, I'm doing it online, and March 4th, 10 spots for the online, and March 4th, um, 4th in person is 20 spots. And you might be listening to this, and you're thinking it's a month away, which it is, but, I'm going to close registration um, as soon as the spots are full. And I've already reached out to people and I already think a lot of people are going to want to do this. So it is only 75 us for the in-person or 97 us for the online. And that it's just because we have different currencies. It roughly equals the same. And let me tell you what you're going to get in that. You're going to get a three hour workshop slash masterclass where we're going to go through the seven steps in more detail. We're going to take some of those personalities tests. We're going to discuss some steps together and with one another and create this plan. You're also going to get two weeks of Facebook group support. So the week before the masterclass and the week after the week before there'll be some prep work and you'll just be able to introduce yourself and share, hey, where you're at, what you're thinking, because that way we are timed together. Those three hours can just be so much more sweet and meaningful and purposeful, right? And then I wanted to give you a week after in this Facebook group to um, explore, think deeper into those topics. And whether you're online, offline, we're all going to be in one group because I think it's going to be really great. So you can do live videos in there and so forth, right? Uh, and so it's two weeks of intensive support plus the workshop. Plus, the, when you immediately sign up, you're going to get access to the seven part series where we go over those, where I, the seven steps I just listed there. Because I did the series before, I made it into a little mini course that goes a little bit more in depth to each particular thing. Um, in the series where you can go through that and start to prepare from now. And then, yeah, so you're going to get two weeks of Facebook group support, access to a bonus mini course, three hour workshop. And then at the end of all of that, of actually doing the master class, if you want to get more support, there's one on one coaching opportunities for that as well. So remember, there's only 10 spots for the in online 20 spots for the in person. So sign up as soon as you can so that you can be in. I want you to be in if you're listening. I would love to have you in and really help you catalyze your purpose this month. So 
I am so grateful that you've even listened this far and I'm grateful that you are in my community and I'm, you're my tribe and I'm just, um, this just feels so right. Like it feels so right to be talking about this topic in this season, in this time. And I'm really excited. So thank you. Make sure you download, um, the workbook. We can go madewell345.com slash catalyze your purpose is the workbook madewell345.com slash catalyze your purpose. Masterclass is the masterclass. And um, I'm getting the link for the in-person one up and going, but you can email me if you want to be an in-person one and you can actually pay for the online one right away. And so grateful for you. And I'm so, so excited. I hope this blessed you and I hope you're doing well. And I cannot wait to share the next four episodes with you on the podcast. Cannot wait to journey with you to catalyzing your purpose. So get the workbook, get the masterclass, um, and sign and even join my um, healthy and thriving women's group on Facebook so that you can, I'm going to be talking about purpose there all, all month. So grateful for you. Thank you again. And I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.